Hello and thanks for joining us. This is the Signature TV News update. I am Marvelous Obomman. Now in the headlines, the Chief of Army Staff Farouk Yahaya assures wounded soldiers of commitment to their medical treatment. The Delta State Governor Ifanyo Kowa kicks over delays in the reconstitution of Niger Delta Development Commission Board. And now the details. The Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Farouk Yahaya, says Nigerian Army is committed to giving prompt attention to the medical needs of wounded officers and men of the 44 Nigerian Army Reference Hospital in Kaduna State. The Army Chief gave this assurance on Thursday while visiting wounded soldiers in this hospital. He expressed appreciation for their sacrifice to the nation adding that the army was doing everything possible despite the challenges of the COVID-19 pandemic to provide them with adequate treatment in order to hasten their recovery. He also disclosed that all arrangements have been concluded for personnel that require medical treatment abroad to be flown out, especially for those that need plastic surgery and prosthetics. During a tour of the hospital wards, Lieutenant Yahaya made token donations to the, all the impatients to further boost the morale. He was later given a brief by the chief medical director of the hospital, Colonel Stephen Onuchuku, on the achievements and challenges of the hospital. Responding, Lieutenant General Yahaya expressed commitment to ensuring that the challenges of the hospital were adequately addressed to cater for the medical needs of personnel. In October 2020, President Muhammad Buhari nominated Loretta Onoche as an independent National Electric Commission commissioner to represent Cross River State. The appointment has since triggered outrage among Nigerians, even as Onoche denies being a card carrying member of the Delta State chapter of the All Progressives Congress. Signature TV correspondent Choma Uzochuku went to the streets of Abuja to get the reactions of ordinary Nigerians. President Buhari should listen to the people. A Kadkari member of any political party is not supposed to be a member of INEC board or appointed as a commissioner. I think Nigeria should allow her to serve his nation since he has been appointed as one of the commissioners. Somebody who has already been involved in politics, uh, whether she claimed that she has resigned from any political party or not, she is a politician. I don't think it's right for the president to appoint this woman into this office. The appointment, as far as I'm concerned, might just really be in the right direction by Mr. President. Maybe he has looked at her antecedents and noticed that she has this, um, she does not have this partisanship to all of the political party. As far as I'm concerned, if she's coming to do the work, let's give her the opportunity and the chance to do while we watch what she says. And then from there, if she does the opposite, then we indict her. I don't think the right thing to do is to make somebody who is in a political party, a commissioner, I don't think it's the right thing to do. The Delta State Governor, Ifanyo Kowa, has rejected the use of forensic audit as an excuse for delaying in constituting the board of the Niger Delta Development Commission, NDDC. Okowa, who spoke while receiving the South South Zona Working Committee of People's Democratic Party, PDP, in Asaba on Thursday, said the forensic audit was about past activities of NDDC and should not jeopardize the progress of the commission. He stated that by the law establishing NDDC, it was meant time to touch Niger Delta people and the act was all encompassing, including giving the people representation on the board and for states in the zone to participate indirectly through advisory council of the commission. And according to him, in the last two years, a more, they have truly not had a board of the NDDC. 
A 90-year-old Yusuf Yakadre has been arrested by operatives of the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDLEA, for allegedly selling drugs to use in Yakadre village in Rimi local government area of Kastana State. Director Media and Advocacy Headquarters Abuja, Femi Baba Femi, made this known in a statement on Friday. Baba Femi said the non-Nigerian was full of regrets when he was interrogated as he confessed to have been selling cannabis to the youths in his community for eight years due to their demand for it. Though he failed to disclose his source of supply, he however vowed that his arrest on Wednesday 7 July 2021 would make him back out of the business. And now moving over to business. Members of the minority group in the House of Representatives on Thursday declined to participate in the consideration and adoption of the report by the Committee on AIDS, Loans and Debt Management, chaired by Ahmed Safana. The report was on the external borrowing plan of the federal government to fund the 2021 budget, for which the President, Muhammad Buhari, sought National Assembly's approval. Safana had prayed the House to accept the report on Buhari's request for the implementation of the new external borrowing of $2.34 trillion in the 2021 Appropriation Act, through the issuance of euro bond in the international capital market. The speaker, Femi Bajabiamila, called on the minority leader, Ndudu Elumelu, to second the prayer by Safana, which he declined on the basis that he was away in his constituency to attend to his people who were under attacks. The speaker then asked the deputy minority leader, Tobi Okechuku, to second the prayer, which he also declined, stating that he cannot go against what his leader declined to. The speaker also called on another opposition People's Democratic Party member, Linda Ibazo, who also declined to second the prayer. And now on the foreign scene. Haitian authorities have arrested 28 people possibly implicated in President Jovenel Moise's murder, and amongst them are 15 Colombians and two Haitian Americans. On Friday, the Taiwanese embassy confirmed that 11 suspects in the assassination of Haitian president were detained at its facilities in port au prince Earlier in the delay, the suspects had entered the embassy while fleeing Haitian police, who initially tried to chase them even into the Asian country's territory. Taiwanese diplomats immediately authorized the operation to demonstrate their nation's commitment to the Haitian people and to allow the truth of the incident to be discovered as soon as possible. Police Director Leon Charles stated that three Colombian nationals were killed in shootouts with security forces, while eight Colombians who participated in the assault on Moise's residence are on the run. Meanwhile, interim Prime Minister Claude Joseph again called on the population to remain calm and to avoid acts of vandalism. Now to the world of entertainment. Anita Eze is on standby. Over to you, Anita. It don't happen. It don't happen. My friend, it don't happen. Hello, and thanks for joining us on today's segment of the entertainment news. It's always, always a great pleasure to have you join us on entertainment news. I am Anita Eze. Nigerian singer Yemi Alade started a debate online after she shared a photo depicting the obstacles women encounter while trying to reach their goals. In the photo, men and women in corporate attire are seen starting a race on a truck. However, the women had obstacles such as laundry and other house chores in their way while the path in front of the men was smooth. In the caption, Yemi Alade pointed out the obstacles women face could come in different forms, including hormones and biological factors, and also obstacles brought on by lack of support. While some agreed with her, others argued that the photo is one-sided because it depicts that men do not experience obstacles on their path to success. Well, if you ask me, I would say that women's multitasking skills are extraordinary as compared to men. But then, no one asked me. So I'll just move on to the next gist. Kanye West is reportedly helping Kim Kardashian with rebranding of her makeup business KKW Beauty despite their ongoing divorce as there is no bad blood between them 
despite being in the middle of a divorce. According to reports, the exes are getting along fine more than three months after their split. It was gathered that Kim's decision to rebrand has nothing to do with dropping the W in the KKW since she has not changed her legal name and still goes by West. Kardashian filed for divorce from West this past February after more than six years of marriage. They shared joint custody of their four children, North, Saints, Chicago and Sound. And that's where we draw the curtain on today's segment, the main news. I am Anita Eze. Thank you, Anita. Now over to sports. The Nigerian senior female national team, Super Falcons, have been scheduled to camp in Austria for 10 days to intensify preparations ahead of Aisha Buhari Invitational Tournament scheduled to hold in Lagos from September 14 to 20, 2021. The Nigerian Football Federation President, Amaju Pinik, who made the disclosure also revealed that the Super Falcons are likely to return to the USA for more friendly matches for the team to be in shape for the African Women Cup of Nations qualifier against Black Queens of Ghana in October. Super Falcons bow to the four-time FIFA Women World Cup champions USA 2-0 in their last summer series outing as the team had earlier lost 0-1 to Reggae Girls of Jamaica before recording three goals apiece with Portugal ladies. Morocco will host the 2022 African Women Cup of Nations, which the Super Falcons won last in 2018. Before we end the news, a recap of our major stories. The Chief of Army Staff, Farouk Yahaya, assured wounded soldiers of commitment to their medical treatment. The Delta State Governor, Ifan Yokowa, kicks over delays in reconstitution of Niger Delta Development Commission Board. Safety and security begins with you. Be patriotic. Report any suspicious activity to law enforcement agencies. Please stay safe. That's the Signature TV News update. On behalf of my producer, Damilola Abudu, I am Marvelous Obomana. Thanks for watching.